After witnessing a murder, 13-year-old Rachel Gardner is sent to a hospital for counseling. However, she wakes up in an unfamiliar building with no memory of how she got there. The only way out appears to be through an elevator, where a machine-generated voice over the intercom declares her as a sacrifice for the inhabitants of the upper floors. As Rachel ascends from B7 to B6, she encounters a man with bandages wielding a scythe, narrowly escaping death. She finds another elevator taking her to B5, where she reunites with Daniel Danny Dickens, her counselor. Soon, it becomes apparent that Danny is untrustworthy. He obsessively talks about Rachel's blue eyes and locks the door when she tries to escape. Cornered by Danny, who threatens to take out her eyes, Rachel is saved when the scythe-wielding man intervenes, cutting Danny through the gut. Despite the chaos, Rachel discovers that Danny had anticipated her distrust. He reveals a disturbing plan, claiming she will be reunited with her parents in hell. Rachel's lost memories are triggered by Danny's words, and he attempts to persuade her to stay with him forever. However, before he can finish, the scythe-wielding man, designated as a new sacrifice by the intercom, is about to kill Rachel. Surprisingly, Rachel is no longer afraid to die. The intercom accuses the man of violating a rule by leaving his designated floor and attacking another inhabitant. As he attempts to flee, Rachel confronts him and asks to be killed. In a twist, the man introduces himself as Zack, claiming to be an idiot. He proposes a deal. If Rachel helps him escape the building, he will kill her. Together, they ascend to B4, a place resembling a graveyard with stone structures. Graves surround them as they split up to investigate the mysterious area. Rachel explores and stumbles upon a library filled with records of sacrifices in the building. A mysterious letter promises to fulfill her true wish. Flipping through the records, she discovers that Zack's real name is Isaac Foster, an infamous serial killer who used to roam deserted alleyways searching for victims. Meanwhile, as Isaac destroys gravestones out of boredom, he accidentally activates a switch, allowing Rachel to proceed further into the building. Returning to Zack, Rachel reveals she has learned about his dark past. Instead of fear, she reminds him of her wish to be killed. As they continue, they encounter a boy wearing a pumpkin mask, Edward Mason. Eddie, the inhabitant of B4, confesses his love for Rachel at first sight and wants to kill and bury her. After a brief skirmish, Eddie flees but later offers to grant Rachel's wish for death. Hesitant, Rachel realizes Zack won't escape if she dies. Tracking them down, Zack convinces Rachel to side with him. Furious at her rejection, Eddie switches off the lights, attempting to use the darkness to his advantage. Foiling Eddie's plans, Zack steals his remote control. With the lights back on, Zack easily defeats Eddie and buries him in the grave meant for Rachel. They then take the elevator up to B3, entering a prison-like environment controlled by Catherine Ward, a sadistic prison warden. Catherine forces them through various obstacles and booby traps as punishment for their perceived crimes. In the first room, Zack accidentally traps himself in an electric chair, repeatedly shocked. Catherine gives Rachel a hint on how to rescue him. Rachel discovers that the lifeless figures in the adjacent room wield control over the chair. Upon demolishing the dummies, Zack gains liberation, and the door to the next room unlocks. However, a perilous situation awaits them in a gas-filled chamber. Catherine discloses that a puzzle must be unraveled to secure an exit, with only one gas mask at their disposal. Time ticks away as they grapple with the challenge, with the looming threat of even deadlier poison gas if the puzzle remains unsolved. In a race against time, Rachel seemingly triumphs over the initial stage of the puzzle by balancing a scale. Yet as the time limit expires, the gas takes its toll. Rachel, however, notices an open air vent just in time. Boosted by Zack, she retrieves a keycard, but Zack inadvertently breaks it in his hurry to open the door. The second gas begins to fill the room, prompting Rachel to improvise. Recognizing the gas's flammable nature, she sparks an explosion that obliterates the door, securing their escape. Despite surviving, both are weakened by the gas, deciding to rest. During their respite, Zack recounts a childhood dream, recalling a tumultuous time living under abusive caretakers. Progressing to the next room, he is confronted with a dollhouse puzzle mirroring his traumatic past. This ordeal exacerbates his agitation. The subsequent challenge in the room involves two syringes, 
one harmless, and the other containing a perilous hallucinatory drug. Injecting both, Zack succumbs to despair, becoming aggressive and threatening Rachel's life. A haunting reminder of an oath from his past compels Zack to regain composure. In a revealing flashback, it unfolds that Zack, inspired by a horror slasher movie, took drastic action by murdering his abusive caretakers. In the current moment, Zack succumbs once more to the drug's influence. Rachel is pursued into the last room of the floor, where Catherine herself conducts an auxiliary operation. Catherine hands Rachel a gun, suggesting she ends Zack's life. Despite Zack's encouragement, Rachel declines, emphasizing their choice to either kill or be killed. Impressed by her resolve, Zack stabs himself to honor their pact, angering Catherine. She exits her secure room to inspect Zack's body. Discovering he's still alive, she promises gleefully to torment him, brandishing a machine-controlled gun threateningly from the ceiling. Little does she know, the gun she gave Rachel was unloaded all along. Unfazed, Rachel calmly retrieves another fully loaded gun from her bag and shoots Catherine in the stomach. This momentary distraction weakens Catherine, allowing Zack to regain enough consciousness to deliver the final blow. Rachel and Zack make their way to the elevator, where Rachel discloses she was in counseling after witnessing a murder. As Zack collapses from his injuries, Rachel is determined to press forward alone, hoping to find something to heal him. On a floor modeled after a church complex, they encounter a priest named Abraham Gray. They strike a deal. Gray will lead Rachel back to B5, Danny's floor, which holds the necessary medical supplies. In return, Rachel agrees to undergo a test to assess her character. Before parting ways, she promises Zack to retrieve a knife from his floor, following Gray down to Catherine's floor once again. Rachel is tasked with restoring power to the elevator to advance further. Beside her, a strange and bewitching sweet gas emanates from the man. Navigating through the jail cells again, she faces an attack from Catherine's zombie-like prisoners. In her absence, Catherine's body is missing, and a hallucination of Catherine taunts Rachel, praising her as an exemplary sinner for her cold-heartedness. Heading down to Eddie's floor, Rachel ruthlessly crushes screaming stuffed hands, emerging from the unturned graves to activate the elevator referring to them as simply doll hands, akin to Catherine's. Eddie's grave is upturned, his body missing, and a hallucination of Eddie taunts Rachel, questioning her lack of compassion. Gray expresses discomfort at Rachel's actions, observing her on each floor. Finally reaching Danny's floor, Rachel panics to discover that all the medicine and Danny's body are missing. With no other choice, she follows Gray back to Zack's floor. Meanwhile, on B2, Zack continues to dream of his childhood, where he murdered another passing woman. Taken in by a kind old blind man, Zack tries to curb his urge to kill, but ends up murdering a random man. Discovering the blind man's murder by gleeful muggers, Zack realizes that destroying people's happiness is satisfying for him. He kills the pair and declares himself a monster. Danny approaches the unconscious Zack, wondering if he should kill him. Upon Zack's awakening, Danny recounts how he survived using body armor and fake blood, offering medicine to Zack in return for gouging out Rachel's eyes. Zack declines, and Danny departs. Meanwhile, Rachel discovers Zack's knife in an improvised bedroom. Observing the room, she realizes she knows nothing about him. Heading back up to Gray's floor, the priest questions Rachel's motives, branding her a selfish witch who brings misfortune to those around her. Distressed by the accusations against her faith, Rachel flees and reunites with Zack. Choosing to follow Danny's trail of blood for medicine, Rachel encounters a giant snake, forcing Zack to fight it off, further draining his strength. Gathering courage, Rachel decides to pursue Danny alone, with Zack giving her his knife for protection. Along the way, she crosses paths with Gray, who discloses that he has seized the medicine Danny carried. The scene shifts to a courtroom, where Gray presides as the judge in a witch trial to determine Rachel's identity. Hallucinations of Danny, Eddie, and Kathy testify against her. Kathy accuses Rachel of hiding a deceitful heart beneath her calm exterior. Eddie criticizes Gray for selfishness, while Danny claims Rachel's soul is irredeemably corrupted. With all testimonies against her, Gray declares Rachel a witch and sentences her to be burned at the stake. 
As Rachel faces the impending flames, she reflects on her relationship with Zack, realizing he is her guiding force, the one who consistently helped and saved her when she needed it most. Using Zack's knife to cut herself free, Rachel returns to the present, deducing that Grey used drugs to create illusions on his floor. Faced with exposure and death threats, Grey surrenders and hands over the medicine. Rachel uses the medicine to stop the bleeding, disinfect the wound, and stitch it up. She declares her realization to Grey. Proceeding to the final floor, B1, Zack reveals the traumatic truth about his past, his mother's lover setting him on fire, resulting in severe burns covered by bandages. His mother then sold him to an illegal orphanage involved in child trafficking. Rachel struggles to share a secret with Zack, fearing that he might despise her for concealing it. The elevator finally halts at B1, revealing a dimly lit house with gray furnishings. Zack ventures further into the floor, discovering a room filled with fake flowers and the unnaturally stitched together corpses of a couple at the corridor's end. Overwhelmed, Rachel pleads with Zack to end her life before fainting. Suddenly, Danny appears and locks Zack out of the room. He proposes to unlock it only if Zack fully explores the floor and uncovers Rachel's mysterious past. Reluctantly, Zack embarks on the exploration, overcoming various death traps, but eventually falling into a hole filled with sharp spikes. Saved by Gray, the priest who controls the entire building, Zack learns that the facility is an experimental setup to study those who claim to believe in God. In B7, sacrifices are judged by angels on each floor. Intrigued by Rachel and Zack's relationship, Gray provides Zack with a clue on how to proceed. This allows Zack to enter Rachel's room, where he discovers a recorded news report detailing the gruesome murders of Mr. and Mrs. Gardner. The couple, in wedlock, suffered mutilation with bullet and knife wounds, their bodies unnaturally stitched together. Strangely, Rachel, their daughter, was found unharmed, raising suspicions about her involvement. As Zack continues his investigation, he watches a recording of an interview between Danny and Rachel. In the interview, Rachel reveals that her parents were abusive and harbored intense hatred for her and each other. One fateful night, her father snapped and fatally stabbed her mother. In self-defense, Rachel took her mother's gun and shot her father to protect herself. Later, Rachel stitched their bodies together to create the perfect family. She lived happily with them until the police arrived. Noticing her blank blue eyes, Danny revealed to Rachel that his mother committed suicide because he was born missing an eye. He became obsessed with Rachel because her eyes resembled his mother's. Angry and disgusted, Zack stormed back to where Rachel and Danny were. He proclaimed his suspicions that Rachel was the angel of B1, which Danny confirmed. Danny revealed that Rachel was sent to B7 after finding newfound faith in God by reading a Bible. Knowing she had lied to him, Zack angrily declared that he had not raised God disillusioned. Rachel, armed with a reloaded gun, shot at Zack but missed. She fled, luring Zack through more traps until he cornered her in the last room. He once again asked her if she intended to kill him. Danny arrived and held Zack at gunpoint. Cornered by the two of them, Rachel calmly drew her gun and fired, shooting Danny much to his surprise. She claimed that Zack was hurt and needed to be put down. However, she remained conflicted since she had lost her faith in God, meaning there was nobody left to forgive her for her crimes. Hesitating to shoot Zack, she was pushed down, reminding Rachel that he was the one who made the promise to kill her, not her God. Zack shook her back to her senses. The two swore to each other again on their vow and attempted to continue their way out, although B1 was a raised floor. Rachel was unaware of its location, even after knowing every nook and cranny of the place, deducing that the exit must be on B2, due to her floor being the last to be built, and the strange observation that no one ever came down from above, she encountered Grey on the way to activate the elevator. He bombarded her with questions about her intentions and her identity. Rachel told him that she had accepted herself and would hence take responsibility for her own actions and choices from now on. Rachel gives her response, and Grey, satisfied, drops a hint about the exit behind a large stained glass window on his floor. When Rachel and Zack reunite, they search for her gun, discovering that Danny's body is missing once again, and Rachel's gun is destroyed. Together, they reluctantly return to B2, where Zack breaks through the stained glass window, revealing a long flight of stairs leading to the surface. At that moment, 
The building's self-destruct sequence is triggered. Rachel and Zack flee up the stairs as the facility burns and collapses, encountering steel bars blocking their way. Despite a momentary panic attack, Zack overcomes his fear of fire, breaking through the bars and other obstacles, albeit breaking his scythe in the process. They finally reach the top floor. On the top floor, Rachel questions Zack about his true intentions. As they converse, Danny arrives, shooting Rachel in the back and revealing himself as the one who initiated the self-destruct sequence. He holds Zack at gunpoint, forcing him to watch Rachel's impending demise. Rachel, however, assures Zack that fulfilling their vow is inconsequential. What matters is that the vow was made. Unhappy with Rachel's affection for Zack, Danny shoots her again, preparing to kill Zack. Gray intervenes with a crossbow, disabling Danny. He instructs Zack to leave through the exit, promising a chance to save Rachel. Carrying Rachel's body, Zack heads to the door with Danny still pointing his gun at his back. Gray shoots Danny again to prevent him from harming Zack as he exits with Rachel's lifeless form. Gray engages in a final conversation with Danny, expressing his fascination with how Rachel and Zack influenced each other. He acknowledges the humanity in everyone, recognizing both flaws and beauty. The building crumbles, seemingly ending the lives of both Danny and Gray. Zack manages to surface just as the police reach the scene of the collapsed building. He surrenders to the authorities so Rachel can receive medical attention. Once Rachel recovers from her injuries, she is placed in a mental care facility where the staff tries to rehabilitate her, but with only limited success. Rachel learns that Zack has been sentenced to death for his killing spree, including the murder of her parents and her abduction. Despite this, Zack, shortly after the news breaks, infiltrates Rachel's room to fulfill their promise. Having escaped prison, they both leap out of the window to evade capture. Once again, Rachel pleads with Zack to end her life. Zack reassures her, instructing her to cease crying and to smile. By the time the police arrive, the room is empty, with blood splattered on the windowsill and Zack's knife on the floor. And with that, the story comes to an end. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, stay well.